Hello there, I'm Rick Clough, and this is the Early Edition Podcast for Wednesday, the 17th day of July. Today, did this week's federal cabinet shuffle shift the balance of power in B.C.'s favor? Two local opposition MPs weigh in on that question. Also, a Canadian researcher alleges nutrition experiments were carried out on residential school students in the 1940s. We'll hear how that's affecting people in Port Alberni, where some of that testing was done. And does the summer fun lead to sleep deprivation? We'll talk about the science of fatigue with the man who's called the Canucks Sleep Doctor. Stephen Harper added some new faces to the Conservative cabinet this week. Eight new ministers, including four women, and now five MPs from British Columbia sit at the table. Many younger members of Parliament have earned more responsibility and are ready for more responsibility. Today they step forward and join experienced hands who remain in key portfolios. I'm particularly proud that a number of strong and capable women are taking the lead across the ministry. We're joined by two local opposition MPs this morning from the official opposition, Don Davies, who is the NDP MP for Vancouver Kingsway, and from the Liberal Party, Hedy Fry, MP for Vancouver Centre. Good morning and welcome to Studio 10. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, Rick. <clears throat> Hedy, do you see this cabinet shuffle as a response to the youth represented in, our, in, our, in your leader, Justin Trudeau? One could say that, but I don't believe that, because these people have been there long before Justin became leader. They are his pit bulls. They are the ones who have been repeating every word religiously, as he told them, taking on the scandal issues on on everything from the robocalls all the way to the Nigel Wright. Uh, they've been repeating their lines assiduously. So I think they were, they were being rewarded for good behavior and for being loyal but servants. There, there, there was some analysis saying, you know, he wanted a younger, fresher face on his cap. He didn't want to look like it was the same old people. I use that word (laughs) (laughs) judiciously, yes. (laughs) Um, I I think, though, Rick, if you look at his new cabinet, all of the really important portfolios, he's got his old, old faces there. He gave these very ministers of state, they were the sort of junior portfolios, and they're surprising ones that he gave to them because Michelle Rempel could have done environment. She knows it well enough, but she wasn't given that. But what a pair, Poirier, I mean, this is a man who has actually been so deeply attached to the prime minister at the hip in terms of everything that's been going on. And if you look at Kelly Leach and uh, Mitchell Rempel and, and uh, Shelley Glover, who is who are all been put into, into junior positions, well, Shelley has been given, and our CMP officer has been given heritage. So I think, yes, he had to reward them. I think, yes, it also politically helps him to look like he's got some young new faces. But these people have always done as they're told. So we're not getting innovative ideas, we're not getting fresh thinking, we're not getting people who have independent minds. Don Davies, what stands out for you in this shuffle? Well, I I think first and foremost is the context in which it occurs, Rick. Uh, You know, four weeks ago, the parliamentary session ended in Ottawa. And I think that a a fair assessment of uh, that session was that the Harper government was seriously damaged. You know, they had uh, backbenchers who were chafing and revolting really at uh, the Harper style of of hyper-control of government. You had Brent Rathgerber actually abandon the Conservative caucus. Uh, The Auditor General said that they lost $3 billion and couldn't account for it in security spending. And then, of course, you had the Senate, which is just mired in scandal of of every type, from criminal charges to fraud charges to, to allegations of corruption. We have to remember this reaches right into the Prime Minister's office. I mean, it's it's a very rare thing in Canada where the, the chief of staff in the prime minister's office is under investigation by the RCMP. So I think quite clearly and very transparently, this represents a, a, a bit of a desperate attempt by Prime Minister Harper to change the channel and try to, try to get Canadians talking about something other than the scandal and incompetence that are really, I think, starting to damage his government. Let's look specifically at how this shuffle will affect British Columbia. James Moore... Yes. Uh, A local MP here, now Canada's new Minister of Industry, uh, considered to be one of the key economic portfolios in the Cabinet. Here's what our Premier, Christy Clark, had to say about the move. He's going to be able to go to Ottawa and talk to them about how our natural gas opportunity is as big for Canada as the oil sands are in Alberta. He intimately understands the size of the opportunity here. What I'm excited about is the chance for James Moore to be reflecting British Columbia's priorities in Ottawa. That's his job, and he's always done a good job. 
Eddie, for how much influence will James Moore have at the table, and how much can he speak on behalf of British Columbia and, in fact, the liquefied natural gas development here in BC? I, I think James Moore will have as much influence as any one of the senior ministers will have at the table, because James is obviously trusted by the Prime Minister. He's put him in Cabinet immediately. He came in, and he's kept him, and now he's giving him a promotion, so to speak. How much, at the same time, any minister has in terms of influencing this Prime Minister is a question that we have to ask. You know, Flaherty obviously is somebody he's close to, and you can see Clements, and, but, but whether John James... And John Beard. And whether James fits into that isn't as evident, but he has been given a promotion. Um, you know, I know James. I think James is a, is a good, good, good minister. He's worked hard. He, he knows his files whenever he's been given them. Whether, I think the, the salient question we have to ask here, Rick, is does anyone say anything or influence anything that the prime minister isn't willing to be influenced by. Don Davies, um, if James Moore represents BC's views in Ottawa, how do you expect him to handle the question of pipelines? Well, first of all, in terms of British Columbia representation, Rick, I just wanted to say that we've got uh, about 13% of the population in a 39-member cabinet, which, by the way, is extremely bloated. It's one of the largest in history. That would entitle us to five Yeah, he just wanted to downsize government and increase his cabinet by two positions. Exactly, in a time of restraint. When, he's asking, when Harper's asking Canadians to tighten their belts and is cutting $4 billion from government spending, he's increasing his cabinet from 37 to 39. Uh, that would entitle us to five cabinet ministers from British Columbia, which is what we have. So there's no there's no uh, extra voice for British Columbia in this cabinet. It's exactly what we're entitled to. Um, one thing about industry is I, I think in our country we have to start realizing that industry is much more than just pipelines and oil and gas. Uh, you know, to have a modern uh, economy of the 21st century, we need a national industrial strategy that is built on much more than extracting natural resources. So I'm not certain that that's a necessarily a positive development. I'd also like to say that James Moore was at the cabinet table before. Uh, we have a number of, of MPs from British Columbia. I would have expected them to be taking BC's voice to the table even before now. But Mr. Harper wants to put the pipeline through to the West Coast. Do you think he'll use Absolutely. James Moore to try and convince <clears throat> the people here in BC that this is the right thing to do? Well, I think uh, uh, Prime Minister Harper and, and uh, Minister of Natural Resources Joe Oliver, who, by the way, remains in his post, uh, have made it quite clear that notwithstanding the environmental assessment going on, that they want the Enbridge pipeline to go through. They um, have, I think, staked a lot of their political capital and reputation on developing pipelines in the West, and uh, I expect that to continue. So uh, it'll be important, I think, to wait and see, but I, I think James Moore will attempt to try to pressure British Columbia in ex into accepting those pipelines. What's your take on that, Eddie? My take on that is that, uh, in, in fact, there is no change in his in his position with regard to the pipelines. He's kept Joe Oliver there. Uh, right. He has brought in James Moore. And as I said, James has been an effective minister in that he's an intelligent man and he understands his portfolio. But he has also been one of the prime minister's chief pit bulls. He's always said exactly as he was told, done exactly he was told. But he's smooth. James convinced people in Canada that he was putting more money into heritage when he was cutting it remarkably. So I think he will tailor the message probably a little smoother than others, but I do not think that James will come to the rescue of British Columbia because I think he is has always done exactly as he was told. Finally, let's talk about the one thing that is still on people's lips now. Even though the Parliament has risen for the summer, the Senate spending issue is still a very contentious issue with voters across this country. As opposition members, what do you still want to know about this? Don Davies. How about the truth? Uh, you know, to, to put it as simply as possible. Um, you know, I watched in the House of Commons as this uh, entire event unfolded. And rather than just coming clean with Canadians from the very beginning and having the, the Prime Minister's office fully cooperate with what I think everybody agrees is at, at best a corrupt uh, action, at worst a criminal one, and I'm talking about the payment to a sitting senator of $90,000 to, quiet, to uh, keep him quiet, um, instead we got uh, uh, partial explanations, very carefully parsed words, and I think what everybody comes to realize is an attempt by Prime Minister Harper to, to try to keep a lid on this. And, um, you know, I, I hope that there's a fulsome investigation and we get to the bottom of this because it's a serious scandal and it's a serious breach of ethics and it reaches right into Prime Minister Harper's office. 
I, I think the point is that this, the, the Prime Minister has not really answered any of the questions that people have been asking. It isn't about the Senate. It's about the fact that his chief of staff gave $90,000 to a senator. Now, the bottom line is simply this. Did the Prime Minister know? Did the Prime Minister ask him to do this? Is there some information going on? We've never been able to get anything out of the Prime Minister's office. It sounds like this guy has been just a great guy who did something stupid. Now, the, the, if the PMO had nothing to hide, why are they not actually giving the RCMP the information they're looking for? They're still withholding information from the RCMP. Thank you both for your time this morning. Don Davies is the NDP MP for Vancouver Kingsway, and Hetty Fry is the MP for Vancouver Centre.